been invited by Jaguar to go and test drive for the very first time the brand new all electric Jaguar I Pace. So we are now in Portugal and we're about to get a briefing ahead of driving the actual car. Well, there it is. It's an impressive looking bit of kit, isn't it? Apparently this is mine. something wrong about driving an electric car through a massive I know, I know, it's weird. <laughs> it feels like there's no way it should go up here. <laughs> oh, there we go, it's it then. Oh, it's making it. It's impressive. So it splits the power between the front and rear, <coughs> depending where you need it, I guess. Yeah, it's, that's impressive, going up this gradient. Couldn't walk up here and then drive it. So we've just driven these things over the top of what I can only describe as a mountain, uh, some incredible gradients and the car, it's just amazing. My first experience in the I-Pace, so far absolutely loving it. I think um, it's incredibly smooth, incredibly comfortable, uh, incredibly easy to drive, um, very luxurious uh, and it has some pace as well but we are, what we're about to do now is to put it really through its paces and take it out on a racetrack. Can't wait for that. So feel free to start it up. We're gonna just look at few fingers here before we go and drive. One thing we're gonna do is, of course, you're gonna choose the dynamic modes. Yeah. Okay. So it's a kind of a track mode to give the car a little bit more exciting. <laughs> then here, what are we gonna do? Let's see if I can get that. It's a very interesting thing here. Let's say you, not that you're gonna do a track day on this car, but let's say you want the car a little bit softer because it's wet. Yeah. You can go on the suspension. Uh, you can okay, keep yeah. everything else on dynamic, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. but the suspension can be. You can choose your setup. Yeah, that's you good. You can choose what you want. That's okay. Good. We can have lap times. Okay. <laughs> Let me reset there. Don't put pressure on you. <laughs> 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 then, of course, we've got the G meter. Oh wow! Okay. Which is quite quite interesting yeah. to see as well. A little bit of throttle and brake position mm -hmm. as you drive and the body is moving. Yeah. But then when you finish your drive, you can actually have a quick look. I was going to say, that's good, isn't it? Yeah, very yeah. clever. It will record what you've done with your throttle position and everything. Yeah. It's very interesting things to do. We go on the right here. On the first lap, we need to have a good look on this track. Sure. It's an incredible track with a lot of blind crests. We're gonna start speeding up now, Mark, okay? okay? So we've got the last corner where you don't brake, you just give a lift, bring the car on the inside, it's gonna get light and lively, but then pick up the power, let's go now. Push the power and go to the left there. Now you're gonna go flat out, okay? the brake to the corner. 
turn it the wheel tight and wait. Wait a little bit, wait, wait. Then get on the pound. Let's go straight to the right side there. Keep takes such a while to kind of get your head around that's right it's uh, it's very difficult to, to have the confidence coming over the blind crests to keep her foot in yeah yeah that's exactly right. very but, difficult uh, the circuit is very difficult but a lot of fun I mean you can feel the the talk the instant talk is amazing obviously but uh, also the way you can balance it I mean it feels like it's got quite a bit of understeer but at times on other corners it had oversteer so you can feel the, the balance between front and rear is pretty good that's right that's exactly what I was trying to say to you and that's why sometimes I ask you just wait wait yeah. and as you turn you can feel the car just go and when we get the big moments here yeah. all I told you to do is to get on the power yeah, yeah. you yeah. works like an all-wheel drive car yeah and then you've also seen some outside footage of that <laughs> that would be cool <laughs> that was awesome good <laughs> Uh, so I've just done my laps out on circuit amazing experience this guy here had to sit through it with me but amazing coach talked me through the whole thing and I wasn't too scary was I? No definitely not, you were well, it was good fun. <laughs> Turns out we've actually met each other years ago I went to Jaguar to do a talk and uh, the two of us sat together having lunch years ago yeah. so it's great to see you again man thank great you very to see much. You too. Thank Cheers. You. I think I did three flying laps what an experience unbelievable stuff I mean the cars <laughs> <laughs> the cars nearly got run over. The trouble with, the trouble with electric cars is <laughs> you can get run over very easily because you can't hear them coming. <laughs> the acceleration is insane, both from a standing start but also out of a, a, a corner, slow corners as well. But the balance of the car is quite interesting because the weight distribution is so evenly spread front to, front to rear. It's a 50-50 split in terms of weight distribution. The balance of the car on track is uh, is also you know really evenly balanced so when you're going through a fast corner you can kind of have it dancing um between understeer and oversteer and you can play with that with the throttle i mean i i thought i was going to lose it and my instructor saying just bury the throttle bury the throttle and i did and you know managed to bring the rear round and so much fun man so much fun but i mean this is not a race car this is not designed to go on a race track like this but the fun that you can have in in a what is what is an suv is revolutionary you know SUVs are not fun fast dynamic cars but now that we're going electric they absolutely are and the iPACE ticks both of those boxes which makes it a unique car um, you know and it means that for those of those people like me who have a family and dogs and the need to carry loads of stuff around but want to go quickly and have fun now you can do it and the iPACE absolutely does that what a, great, what a great day this is turning out to be. <laughs> the, the thing with all electric cars is that you can completely revolutionize the design process and with no need for a great big engine in the front or a gearbox in the, under the middle center console, you now have the entire battery spread out across the floor pan and it has a number of really big advantages. First of all, it obviously keeps the weight of the car very, very low. It's a huge part of the weight of one of these cars is in the battery, and that's right down as low as it can possibly be. The other thing is that that entire battery module that's spanning the entire floor pan adds a huge amount of stiffness to the chassis. So an aluminium, all aluminium uh, chassis, or 94% aluminium, with this incredible flat battery module that stiffens up the whole chassis, it means that dynamically it's a very, very stiff car. Once you've got a stiff car, you can control the dynamics much more in the suspension rather than in flex and body roll in a, in a more regular chassis uh, of a more regular car. But look at this, the design completely changes. All this space here where the engine would normally go can now be storage space or we can bring the front seats forward and space out the seating area of the car having much more room in the back. Um, the, the boot floor, uh, again, can be much lower because all you've got is this one simple motor that sits kind of across the rear axle. That means you can have more luggage space. It really is an, an absolute revolution in vehicle design that we're going through at the moment.
Right, let's have a little look at it then. It is an awesome bit of kit. I've really enjoyed driving it. The, uh, the experience of driving an electric car, I was familiar with, of course. I've driven quite a few. I've driven Teslas, I've driven BMWs. I've driven a few different electric cars. So I knew kind of what to expect in terms of the instant torque delivery, that kind of stuff, how much acceleration they have. I, I, I'm a big fan, as you all know, uh, of electric cars. I have now driven this quite considerably in different uh, terrains, up and down mountains, on a racetrack and on the public roads all weekend here in Portugal. I've got to say, I, I really, really, really like this car. I think it's a, a groundbreaking car in many ways. It's an SUV uh, and yet it breaks all the rules of SUVs in terms of its design. Of course, it looks pretty sleek and, and much more sporty than a regular SUV. Inside, oh, let's go and have a look, but it has a lot more space because of uh, the traditional confines uh, of design that an electric car kind of gets, gets rid of in terms of positioning things like engines and gearbox. It means as a driver or as a passenger, you have a lot more space. Let's have a quick look. Uh, really nice interior, as you'd expect from Jaguar. All the luxury uh, bits and bobs that you would, you've come to know and love uh, from this brand. Um, in terms of the, the driving position, it's reasonably familiar. This is not revolutionary in terms of the way the thing looks. A Tesla, of course, does away with all of the little buttons and switches and just has that giant sort of iPad type arrangement in the middle. Jaguar haven't gone for that. They've gone for a much more familiar feel uh, because they feel like that's what their customers will want. And I, I can kind of get that. But you have everything you need and it still has the modern technology. It has touch screens. No need for a key, of course. You just turn the button on, everything powers up. Um, so there's your regular dials. Uh, on here we have got, as I said, the, oh, I turned it off again, the, uh, the, the two touch screens that give you further information. Things like sat nav, um, things like uh, your driving, uh, how efficiently you're driving, uh, and all the regular controls. But it also has things like uh, suspension that's fully adjustable, so you can change the kinematics of the suspension. You can raise and lower the ride height for different terrains. We've experienced that this weekend. Um, really nice kind of tactile uh, switches here. They didn't need to do this. Of course, you can do all this with touchscreen. You can do it voice activated. But Jaguar have decided that they prefer, and their customers will prefer, uh, an actual really nicely crafted tactile switch. Aerodynamics play a big part in the design of this car. Uh, and there are some nice little tweaks to it, nice little features that don't just make it look sporty, which they do, like this uh, this bonnet scoop here makes the thing have a, a sporty feel, which of course Jaguar want for this car, but it also has a really key role. Um, they've kept at the front the familiar front face of a Jaguar with this great big radiator grille here. Um, really familiar face, really familiar looking style to the front. There is no radiator behind that like you would get on a regular combustion powered vehicle. That serves as an aerodynamic intake. If you have a look down here, really nicely sculpted intake here where the airflow is drawn in from the front of the car, fed up through that scoop. On the top of the bonnet, comes out there, and it's all there to keep the airflow attached as it follows the sleek contours of the design of the car. So the airflow coming out of that scoop will remain attached to the windscreen and then onto the, uh, the top of the car. Follow the lines, follow the contours, stay attached to the surface, which is really key in terms of aerodynamic efficiency. Then you get to the rear of the car where there's another little spoiler or rear wing, if you like, on the back of the car. Again, really nice styling design, but it's playing a key function here. It's again controlling that airflow, keeping it attached to the surfaces of the vehicle, feeding it down the back of the, the rear window and, uh, and off the back of the car. All done very, very deliberately to keep that aerodynamic efficiency. Just like on a Formula One car or a Formula E car, if the airflow detaches from the surface of the vehicle at some point between front and rear, it becomes very turbulent air. It creates turbulence, that turbulence creates drag, and that drag will slow your car down and limit the mileage or the, the range that you have on a fully charged battery. So it's even more important on an electric car to be efficient in terms of aerodynamics. And these things do exactly that. In fact, the aerodynamics are so efficient coming through this rear wing on here, this rear spoiler, that there is no need for a rear windscreen wiper on this car. The airflow coming over there comes in such a controlled fashion it actually just drags the, any rain that might fall onto that straight off the vehicle and off the back. Door handles that retract into the door of the car when the car's moving. Uh, again, to keep the sleek, clean lines and make it as aerodynamically efficient as possible. 
I mean, who needs door handles when you're traveling down the road? You only need those when you come to a stop and you want to open the door. The performance, as you'd expect, as what I've come to expect from an electric vehicle, is stunning as well. It's uh, incredible on the racetrack uh, yesterday, but even just on the roads, where we want that performance at the very low end, immediately when we hit the throttle pedal, that's when you get that launch off the line, incredible levels of acceleration. I know that's common across electric vehicles in general, but to sit in an SUV and get that level of torque delivery is a pretty special feeling. And I get, you know, if you've never driven any electric car, I urge you to go for a test drive, take one out, just experience it. It will revolutionise the way you think about cars, I promise you. It's a different way of driving. The regen under braking, which you can change uh, through different settings within the software of the car, can be quite aggressive and you can basically do most of your journeys but just using the throttle pedal. The moment you lift off, the regen takes over, it slows the car down to a complete stop if you need it to. So really, really different way of driving, but a really fun way of driving and the performance that it get, you get from this car is enough to really, really satisfy the needs of a sports car owner, let alone someone who needs to put the kids in the back of an SUV.